All right, today I have a fun challenge for you. I want to challenge you to spring clean your cleaning supplies. So go ahead, go to wherever you store all of your cleaning supplies. We're gonna pull them all out and only put back our absolute favorites. Only the things that we love, that we use all the time, and anything else that has accumulated that you're not really using, permission to let it go. We're also gonna test out a bunch of fun new products too and I mean, have you seen this? My goodness. <laughs> or a silicone broom? What? Um, we have some really interesting things to test out together and we'll just see, does it make the cut or not? And along the way, I will share my tried and tested favorites as well. Okay, so here's what I've learned about cleaning products over the years, that the magic is in the motion, not the potion. And so I know how it goes where we acquire new products thinking they are gonna solve all of our cleaning problems and practically clean it for us, right? I mean, that's how these things are sold to us. So I follow some cleaners on like Instagram and YouTube and throughout the year, I see what they're using and I save it to my Amazon cart and then once a year, I let myself try out all the products. Uh, my hope is that it's helpful for you too, that you don't even have to buy them, <laughs> that we can try them out together. Um, and so I'll try, try them out, but I'm very much committed to only keeping the ones that work. So um, I tried the pink stuff a year or two ago. I really like it, the actual cleaning paste. And since then, I've also come to like the multi-purpose cleaner. Well, if you've seen, uh, they have a whole line of all kinds of stuff out now. So we're gonna try um, their wash up spray. This is a foaming toilet cleaner. I, I have some bad <laughs> spots that we're gonna try this out. But also, uh, like have you seen this, the Angry Mama? It's for cleaning the microwave and we're gonna unbox a silicone broom together. I just don't even know how this would work, but we're gonna try it out together. So. Why don't we, let's see, let's start in the kitchen with some of these things because that's where some of the newest ones um, take place. We'll move around the house. I have a couple things for the car as well that I'm excited to try out. And by the end, we will know what works, what doesn't, and what is worth spending your hard earned money on. And just so you know, there won't be any oven disassembling going on um, in this video, but I can link to the, the last one where we did that if you just want a good laugh. Okay. Have you seen this? This is the Broom Bee, which is a silicone broom. And, oh wow, I think it's already telescoping. Okay, I have a love-hate relationship with people that have cleaning accounts because sometimes they do show some really good products and that's where I have gotten some things that work really well and I like them. And then other times it just seems like they just have to have something new to show, right? Which I get it. like. I mean, it would get kind of boring if they were just always showing all the same things. Okay, so this is the Broom Bee, the original silicone broom. What is supposed to be so great about it is that even if you have like wet stuff on the floor or crumbs and dry stuff, it's supposed to work really well. I'm just, I mean, it's literally just like a silicone blade. So I'm really curious <laughs> how this is actually gonna work. Um, so we're gonna put it together quick. Obviously the, the assembly is super easy. What was funny was that I swept the floor yesterday and I'm like, oh no, just with our regular broom. I'm like, why did I do that? I wanted to test this out. You know, now I'm not gonna have stuff on the floor to test. Good news. Uh, the kids were very cooperative in making sure that I had more stuff to, to test on the floor. There's some crumbs on the floor over here. It looks like they like laid it out just for me to test it. It's. I did not intentionally put any of this on the floor, just so you know. Okay, so for reference, what we normally use is just a gross traditional broom, right? Um, so this definitely, it takes a little getting used to the feel of it. It feels weird at first trying to slide it across the floor. And then I also had to learn that if I wanted to get stuff that was like along the baseboards or the cabinets, I had to use the shorter side. Like this is definitely more firm where this has a lot more give. So this side was more effective because at first I'm like, this is not working at all. <laughs> but this side was more effective. Even I am noticing now looking at it up close, like it was grabbing all the dust and hair and all of that kind of stuff too. So I do think it's effective. And then you're supposed to just run it under water to clean it off. It's supposed to be really good with pet hair. And I, I you know, with because with a regular broom, all the hair just gets caught up in it, right? So it is supposed to be very effective with pet hair. So if you have pets in the house, it might be worth a shot. For us, just regular, I don't, it's just still kind of weird to me. I like how slim it is to store. 
it is less gross. They have a dustpan that goes along with it. I didn't get it. I just used our regular one. It didn't use that work that great. So you might want to get the dustpan too, but the jury is out. Okay, so this next one is kind of strange, but it kept getting recommended to me on Amazon. So I was like, fine, I will try it out. It is the Angry Mama Microwave Cleaner. I don't like single use things that it's really only for cleaning the microwave, but what you do is you fill up her body with vinegar and water and then you just put it and you can put a little lemon in it too to make it smell better because that doesn't smell good, right? <laughs> but, um, then you just microwave it on high for seven minutes, allow to stand for two additional minutes, uh, remove Angry Mama by her arms which stay cooler, and then use the remaining vinegar mix liquid on a sponge to clean the microwave. Um, caution, hot liquid. <sighs> All right, let's fill her up, put it in, and give it a try. Okay, so my initial thoughts on this, a few things. One, I don't know why it's called Angry Mama. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> like, I like that the Scrub Daddy sponges are smiling, you know, I don't, so it's neither here nor there. When I was filling it, it was hard to see the fill lines. There's two lines for how far you fill the vinegar and how far the water. It was a little bit, bit difficult to see. I had to hold it up to the window um, in order to see it. Number three, I think you can accomplish the same thing by putting water and vinegar in a coffee mug and microwaving it for five minutes. I've done that in the past and I think it's really gonna come, like have the same effect on the microwave. So is it kind of fun? Yes, but again, to store something like this, to only use to clean your microwave, I just don't know if it's worth it, but we'll see when it's done, how it comes out. Maybe I will change my mind. Okay, it's like starting to pop and kind of make some noise. I don't know, <laughs> but it's just about done. And we'll see how it looks inside. All right, so what it's supposed to do is like steam up the inside of your microwave, which it does look like it did that. And then you're supposed to remove her by her arms. Oh wow, it's quite a bit lighter. So obviously a lot of the liquid is steamed all around um, the microwave. So let's see, I'm gonna, my microwave wasn't that dirty <laughs> to start with, but let's grab our sponge daddy quick. Like, yeah, I mean, anything that was in here is, is coming out really easily. Now I have to dry it out though. <laughs> and it definitely smells like vinegar. Okay, this surprises me. I know on the instructions it said like any extra liquid you can use um, to clean out, but, um, oh, maybe it meant the liquid in the microwave. I don't know, there's no liquid left in here. And now that I'm looking at it closer, it actually got burnt a little bit. So I think seven minutes might have been a little bit too long, which might have been why it was popping and stuff. So if yours does that, stop it before then. So I would definitely put this in the like gimmick category, but I'm not always against gimmicks. So something else I put in the gimmick category last year were the Scrub Daddy sponges. They're expensive, they have a smiley face, but I was like, you know what, gimmick or not, it makes me smile when I look at it. And overall, I, I liked them. But now since then, I have moved them into the essential category. I have had the same three pack of Scrub Daddies um, since last year, a year ago when we did this. One of them ended up going out to the barn to clean chicken feeders. <laughs> so I've thrown one away after it just got like too gross. And now we've been using this one. So even though they are more expensive than regular sponges, they're very durable. We'll put it through the dishwasher every once in a while to clean it out. But the wide weave of it makes it so they don't get really gross and whatnot. So I, these have now since moved over to my essential list. And I have a printable that will have my essentials, my gimmicks, the fun to have but don't necessarily need, as well as some basic spring cleaning checklists if you're into that sort of thing. Now, I also put the Dawn um, Power Wash into the gimmick category. It's kind of a nice to have. We do use it, but this is the same bottle that we have had since last year. So we use it, but not a ton. But today, I want to test it out against the um, pink stuff one and see if there's really any difference. 
I like how this one looks better. Um, and our cleaning lady, Linda, she says she likes to use this for stoves. So she likes to spray down a stove with it. And then we use it um, for soaking pots and pans. It's really nice if you just wanna wash up like a couple pans like we'll do today but also if you wanna soak something. Oh, one other thing I forgot to mention about the Scrub Daddy too. If you watched my video last year, I lamented because I accidentally bought the suction cup holder for it for the inside of the sink. And it was like really, it was like $13 or something ridiculous. And I was like, ah, I, I don't, is it actually worth it? It's actually really nice to have. And it just sticks there. It never comes off. It's a great place for your sponge to dry out at night, I put it on the inside so you don't even see it. So if you go back and forth on if you should get the holder for it or not, I think it's nice. Maybe ask for it for like Mother's Day or something like that, I don't know. So let's test this out, see which one is better. Oh, that's like a jet spray. Um, let's see what the other side looks like. Hmm, okay. So that really like sprays out in like a stream. The, what I like about the, the power wash one is it's more like evenly disperses it. I'm not sure if you can see that. Um, I have the apple scent, which I know synthetic fragrances are not super good for us. It does smell nice. They do have unscented too. And then this just smells like all of the other pink stuff if you're familiar. It's actually not a strong smell at all. So let's wash these up quick and see if there's any difference. Okay, so I would say absolutely no difference. I like the Dawn Power Wash. I like the spray pattern of it better. I don't know. It's, I just like, this is a little too bright and loud for me too. <laughs> I just like how this one looks. Now, I'll probably keep it and use it up. I don't know. What am I gonna do with this? I'll, I'll figure that out later. I do really like the Pink Stuff paste. So this is on, uh, it, this is on my essential list. I would definitely recommend this. And then the Pink Stuff all-purpose cleaner. I like it well enough. This would be like on a nice to have list, works well, but it's it's pretty similar to other multi-purpose cleaners that I've used. I like the Method one probably equally as much. This has a nice smell, they both do. So these are all neck and neck. Definitely not worth buying this if you don't need a multi-purpose cleaner right now. Kelly told me um, about this kit that you can get that runs to a jug of soap. So if you have a soap dispenser uh, next to your sink and it has uh, the little container that you always have to fill and then it like overflows and then there's like bubbles in it, right? And then it just, it's just a pain to fill. I don't know, maybe you're better at it <laughs> than I am. Um, this is a little kit you can get that will go directly from your soap dispenser down to the bottle so you don't have to fill it, you know, very often at all. And I think it looks pretty simple to set up. So I don't know, why don't we give it a try? Okay, so we have the instructions here. I'm gonna pull this out and then, oh, okay. All right, I got it out and now, well, it looks like we just put the tube onto here. I don't think I even needed to take that apart, okay. Oh shoot, you were supposed to run the end of the tube in hot water to soften it and you were supposed to run it from underneath. Okay, okay, I had to recruit Maggie's help <laughs> to get it fed up through the back, but we got it up. It says that the tube only needs to be pushed on a half inch, which is good because that's about only as far as I could get it on. Okay, so now we're gonna connect it down below. I think we can, oh, oh no, I didn't put the, this thing back on, darn it. I can. Ugh, I have to take it apart, Corbin. Corbin's smart, we took off, we just took the top off of here. All right, so put that on. We'll put this back on. Oh, the soap container. You got the soap dispenser. All right, now we gotta go down below. So there's actually a few different versions of these kits on Amazon. This one uh, claims to be the original. It's made in the US. It has really clear instructions, which I appreciate. Um, and they even have a hotline <laughs> you can call if you have any problems. And then there's also different sizes of caps based on um, like whatever soap bottle that you might have. So that's, that's a nice feature too. Anyways, 
it's all set up now. I think this is actually going to work really well. And so we keep dish soap in our soap pump. We just use it for hand soap and dish soap at the sink. And so we just need one bottle and it works really well. So I'll keep you posted, but this, uh, this actually seemed like a really good investment. Okay. So two final things I want to test out in the kitchen before we move on to the bathroom. We've got some interesting toilet <laughs> experiments to do. So this is a cooktop cleaner. We have not been able to get my mom's flat cooktop clean. So we're gonna go over to her house and try this out. But also I would love to know, have you, have you used these, the Swedish dishcloths? We're learning that microfiber is not great for the environment when it breaks down in the little plastics. So I would love to be switching to something a little bit more natural. And I know these are kind of everywhere now. So let's open this up. I'm gonna test out, test them out just by like wiping down the counters. We'll see what we think, but I would love to know what you think about these down below as well. Okay, so it says, this is what came with it. Why do people love Swedish dishcloths? Combine the benefits of a traditional cotton tea towel with a European cellulose sponge and you get our premium Swedish dishcloths. Um, high absorbency, eco-friendly, dishwasher safe, dishwasher safe. Oh, interesting. Odor resistant, biodegradable. How to use scrubby when dry, absorbent like a sponge when wet, rinse, ring, and repeat. Clean in your washing machine for repeated use. So my understanding though is that these break down over time, right? Then eventually you just end up throwing them away, but they're biodegradable, so then it's not a big deal. Um, I would say it works well, like it feels durable. It definitely has kind of a sponge texture. So with some stuff that was stuck on, it felt very effective for that. I think my only concern is, I would be curious for those of you who use them, does it get kind of grubby over time where it looks kind of dirty and pilly? That would be my only thing, but if it's better for the environment, then it's probably a good trade off, right? So these I am gonna continue to test out and then we'll see over time if they become a favorite or not. So I wasn't really thinking of including my mom's flat top stove in this cleaning test video until I saw a reel where uh, you know a cleaning influencer said she found this magical solution for the built on ring of stuff that can accumulate on flat top stoves. So I was like, awesome, but I'm gonna buy this. If that works on my mom's stove, that'll be so cool. Because what has been baked onto there has probably been there for three or four years, right? So it is like really stuck on, so I for sure need a miracle product. So I got the paste that she recommended, and normally I'm all about like dwell time or soaking time, but this was just really like a paste, so I didn't think there was really anything to soak or to let sit. So I used the scrubby sponge thing that was included and I applied it and I started scrubbing and then I started scrubbing some more and a little bit came off, but like not hardly anything at all. And I don't know, it's, it's probably my more mature age now. My fingers start to like lock in place if I like scrub on something too long. It's not good, it's just not good. Um, and so I was getting to that point and I'm like, this is dumb, like this is not working at all. So uh, it happened to be right before we went live in our Take Your House Back group. And so then I asked our friends in there. And so there were some good ideas in there. So uh, one person said just blue Dawn dish soap should work really well. Another said use oven cleaner, but then put saran wrap over it. And then also my friend Rhonda had been sending some tips like that as well to use oven cleaner. So cover it in saran wrap and then use a razor blade, like a razor blade meant for cooktop stoves. So I got one of those kits and then I remembered that I had some um, oven cleaner at home. I never used it in one of our last cleaning videos where we attacked the stove because the natural solutions I was working using worked just fine. So I can link to that video as well. So here's what I decided to do. I did one section with blue Dawn dish soap because that would still be my preference if that works. I did another section with the cleaner that came with the kit for cleaning the stove uh, or with the razor blade and everything. And then I did another section with oven cleaner and I put, well, we didn't have saran wrap. I don't know why my mom doesn't have saran wrap, but she had like a clear cellophane bag. So I put that over it. And it said on the back of the container of the oven cleaner to let it sit for at least 20 minutes. Now, again, I know oven cleaner is all about dwell time. In fact, it's recommended like for really tough spots in your oven that you let it sit for four hours or even overnight. But I did not want to damage my mom's stove and I didn't actually know if you're supposed to be using oven cleaner on the top of the stove. So I decided to do it for just a little over 20 minutes. So I let everything sit for that amount of time and then I took the razor blade out of the box and also the scrubbing thing that came with it. And I started scraping and scrubbing and I, 
the blue the dawn dish soap did nothing the other like cleaner that came with it did nothing but the section with the oven cleaner actually you could tell right away that that was breaking down this ring of stuff so i was scraping at it and it was coming up a little bit but still i was just like why is everybody telling me that these things should work and it's just not? Is it because it's been baked on for years and years and years? And then, oh my goodness, this is why you'll never invite me over to clean your house. <laughs> I realized that the razor blade, it wasn't the sharp side out. You have to actually take it apart and flip it over. But it had this cover on it, so I'm like, why would they put a cover on it and have the razor blade in backwards? Oh my goodness, I was I was not using the sharp side of the razor blade, right? <sighs> so I flipped it around, I got the blade side out, I put some more oven cleaner on it, and then I started scraping. And yes, this absolutely does work, but if it's really baked on, you probably need to let it sit for longer than 20 minutes. It did not seem in any way like it was discoloring or hurting the top of the stove top, so I do think that it could sit longer. I was just running out of time, so I didn't get to do that, but it absolutely was taking it up. You could see it, like it is it is scraping up, and the, the, the small section of the circle that I was able to do and that had soaked the most and I really got to scrape out well, it, it was almost gone. There was still a little hint of it. Um, you couldn't feel it, but you could see it in it. And so I do think that this method would work. I think putting the saran wrap on top keeps it just from like all drying out and evaporating. So I think that's really helpful. Uh, I don't know how long you can let that sit on your stove, but I think the longer the better. And I actually think that this technique works. Uh, my friend Rhonda also said that Easy Off makes a fume free version and she uses that to clean her oven and it works well, but it doesn't have the strong odors. This wasn't too bad, but I was using a pretty small amount of it. And then I also know a lot of professional cleaners use the Zep um, brand oven cleaner and that that is supposed to work really well too. The paste though, that did nothing. I think if you have just run of the mill, normal everyday stuff built up on your stove, it probably works fine. But man, if it's been on there for any longer, I think you're gonna have to go the oven cleaner route. All right, well, that turned into a whole bigger thing <laughs> than I was expecting, so why don't we move on? Okay, hopefully you didn't forget that we're working on cleaning out our cleaning supplies together, right? So what are we gonna put back in? What's making the cut? Yes, absolutely, the sponge daddy, he makes the cut. Uh, these little plastic scraper things, love these, have come to rely on these now too. So those for sure go back in. And then we are gonna put the pink stuff cleaning paste in and our Dawn power wash. Um, a couple other things that I already have in here. This is my favorite glass cleaner, just from the dollar store, Sprayway. I like that it's the foaming cleaner. I am not gonna try out any others. It works great, and that's what we're gonna continue to use. This I tested last year, Folex for cleaning upholstery and carpet, awesome. So this absolutely makes the cut. This is empty, there's no gloves in there, all right. I also really like this awesome cleaner from the dollar store, but I really only use it for car interior. And so this I'm gonna move out, we're gonna do some stuff in the car, so that's gonna go outside with me. So just these are gonna go in there for now. For dishwasher, we we did wanna go away from more traditional dishwasher pods and whatnot, because that's actually one of the most common ways that we ingest chemicals is through our dishwasher tabs and the different things we're using. So we use Molly's suds because they're more natural. They're okay. They're not like the best ever. They don't work as well as Cascade. But in order to have a more natural uh, option, this is what we're using, it works well. And then we got our Dawn dish soap down here. So these are my favorites. These are, and then for a multi-purpose cleaner, um, like I said, either method or the pink stuff. I'm just gonna put the method down here until we use it up and then I'll switch out for the pink stuff. Those are my favorites. Those work super well. Let's head into the bathroom. Uh, I'm really curious <laughs> to see how, ugh, Aisha. I probably shouldn't be showing this on the internet, but you know, we're good friends, right? It's okay. Isn't it funny how we sometimes just put up with stuff that doesn't work well because, I don't know, I didn't even think to replace it. So we've had this toilet brush from Ikea. It was like so cheap, it was like $4, <laughs> I think, right? And it's fine, it's been fine, but it doesn't get into all the nooks and crannies of the bowl like I would like. So we're gonna test out two different toilet brushes. So this is actually a silicone toilet brush, which I've heard some people say, they really like. 
I'm not sure about it because it still just has the typical round shape and I don't know if that's going to get into all the places that I need it to and the silicone kind of like the broom bee I don't know I'm skeptical <laughs> right well maybe that would get into I don't know is it actually together okay so we're going to test out this one and I have some gross toilets <laughs> the toilets in the house here are actually clean because of Linda um we have some that will will be a good good test subject now this one I am really excited about because of the shape of it. When I saw this, I'm like, that makes so much more sense, right? And we're gonna test it out with the foaming toilet cleaner. But again, not in here, we're gonna head out to our office. Okay, so welcome to the bathroom out in our office building. It, it doesn't have a ton of privacy <laughs> right now. It's not complete, but it does have a functioning toilet, which is super nice, but it also got really gross from just sitting for a long time and not being used. So what you do, you tear open the sachet, sachet. <laughs> you tear open the package, pour contents into the toilet, watch the miracle foam rise, leave for 10 minutes, brush and flush. Okay, so while we're waiting for that to do its thing, I can tell you that my favorite shower cleaner and descaler is still the mixture of vinegar and Dawn dish soap. And so I had showed this recently on a video and we cleaned, I cleaned our shower head with it and it worked so well. I don't know the exact mixture. I just warm up vinegar and then you squirt some blue Dawn dish soap in it. So the vinegar is what breaks down the, the lime scale. The Dawn dish soap helps it to stick to the surfaces. When I was cleaning the shower head, I just put it in a pie plate and then soaked it in there. I've also done it where you put it in a baggie and like tie it around the faucet um, if you can't just remove it. And then also I've put it in a spray bottle, spray it in the shower, and the Dawn dish soap is what helps it like stick to the, to the sides of the shower and everything, but it works really well. It doesn't smell great because again, you're using Dawn or you're using vinegar, but it works very well. So that is still my go-to cleaner and I don't try any other bathroom descalers or things like that. Now, when we get back in the house, I do want to show you, I did buy uh, an extendable shower scrubber that I'm curious to see um, if it would, if it looks like it would work well or not. So we'll open that up when we get back in the house. Okay, interesting. We're about five minutes in and now all the bubbles are receding and this is what it looks like. Okay, so it's just about been 10 minutes. And again, here are the two different brushes that we're gonna test out. Um, I just really like the shape and angle of this one. So we'll try it out and then the silicone one. Okay, so two things we're testing out, the pink stuff cleaner and the two different brushes. I don't really think the pink stuff cleaner is any different than any other toilet bowl cleaner I've used. I do think there was a big difference in these. Hands down, I prefer this one. You could get under the rim really well, down into all the other places in there. This was just not as versatile. I think the silicone can work fine. I just think this one's not the right shape. But for now, I'm just gonna leave this one out here because we need one out here anyways. It's it's good enough, like it's fine. If you clean your toilet regularly, it's probably just fine. But if you ever gotta like really get into all the nooks and crannies, hands down, I would pick this one. So I'm not sure if you could quite tell in the video, but the pink stuff did not take away the ring of like mineral buildup in there. So we had some Zep like acidic toilet bowl cleaner out here. Um, so I put that on, it needs to sit five minutes and then we're gonna use this brush and see if that's gonna come off or not. Okay, so that that worked really well. I don't think this is something you wanna use all the time, but if you have some buildup you wanna get off, now it looks like new again. So you just have to have the right product for the job. Uh, um, but again, this brush worked really well. The only downside is if I scrubbed the wrong way, it started to come unscrewed a little bit, so it was just something to be aware of. I also like the tip, um, to just close the lid on your brush to let it drip dry when you're done using it and then while you clean the rest of the bathroom and then when you come back, it will have dripped off and then you can put it into the holder. But yes, this, this we will keep. This, I'll use up the other packet, but I'm never gonna buy <laughs> this again. And then, like I said, uh, this round silicone one, we'll just leave it out here and it'll be fine. So when we were remodeling in this bathroom, Tom asked, he was like, do you want to like, should we tile the shower, do something cool? 
and I'm like as beautiful as that is it's so much more difficult to clean and to maintain and so I said can we just do one of those like smooth one piece fiberglass surround things and so that's what we did so it's easy to clean I love that about it so depending on what the surface is in your shower or tub we're gonna need different tools right obviously but I had seen this a few different times for cleaning the inside of your shower and tub and so I thought well maybe it's worth giving it a shot so and also it is is really like an extendable scrubbing sponge but it does have a few different attachments that you can put on it so this is is just kind of like a, it has a oh what's it called like a brillo pad texture and then this one is much less abrasive more um more like a washcloth or something like that and then you have the scrubbing brush too so it's kind of cool that you have these different attachments that can go on to it then you have the handle that just goes together Let's see if we can figure this out oh it's even and then you can adjust oh wow it actually gets uh pretty long um so yeah if you don't want to like always be crawling into the tub my parents have like a big tub this would work really well not having to get inside of it right and then it actually has two of these so not a bad deal how do we switch this out though so i'm going to take this one off now it has like a velcro backing that we can try to reposition it it sticks on there really well okay then we can put that on okay so far i am impressed with the quality of it and the durability Again, we have a cleaning uh, gal that comes now and she comes twice a week and she cleans the shower. And so the shower's not that bad and I'm so grateful for her. But um, I can't see, I should be having her tested out, right? But I think this would be really nice. Now, could you get into all of the things? I don't know. But you could always pull it off and then use it by hand too so if you've been looking for something that has a little longer reach though to clean spaces like this again i'm just really impressed with the quality of it it feels very sturdy durable this is stuck on very well and i do think it's cool that it comes with the different attachments well along these same lines let's test out some new dusters and i'll show you my favorite mop now i love cleaning influencers i get some great tips and ideas from them but this was kind of funny um, I was following this one influencer and she was like, you have to get a skinny duster. It works great. Like you can clean under the fridge and in your gaps. Um, so we'll, we'll test it out there too. But also it works so well on your ceiling fans. Like this is like such a great multi-purpose tool, right? Literally two weeks later, they're like, you have to get this duster for your ceiling fans. Like this is the only way to clean ceiling fans. So probably they both do work well for ceiling fans, but they both dust and they both kind of do the same thing. So let's test them out. We'll see which works best for ceiling fans, but also has other purposes too, because again, I don't love single use items. Okay, so I mean, already I can tell, just as I'm putting this one together, this one will be more fun to use. Does it kind of remind you of Cookie Monster? They have different colors. I didn't want to get the one that was like gray or tan because I wanted to see the dust on it. This, I think I got the wrong one. The one that she used, you could bend it and like flex it different shapes. So this doesn't actually, this isn't going to work well for the flan, fan blades. We're going to try it a couple other places though too. I think I got a cheaper one because I didn't want to spend the money on the one that she recommended. So, um this is fun i can definitely see how you would dust your fan blades a lot more often with something like this just because it's very enjoyable to use and i think all of this extra fluffy stuff will trap the dust when it's coming off the blade so it doesn't land all over whatever is below the fan especially if it's like over a bed or something i've also shared the trick though if you don't want to get something like this that you can use a pillowcase to go over it too if they're like really dusty but obviously this telescopes, it reaches well. And then the gal did also use it. She showed using like dusting. She also showed dusting like baseboards with it and some other things around her home. So you could use it for like a multi-purpose duster, not just for the fan blades. So in the end, I think this would be um, nice to have. Like it's kind of gimmicky, it's pretty single use, but I could see where it makes it more fun to clean. Um, I do think it's better than like the disposable Swiffers and better quality. I've tried Swiffers in the past too and they were, they were fine. Um, but this would probably be better than Swiffers and it wasn't that expensive either. 
I can't remember the exact, well, we're not supposed to say Amazon prices because they always change, but I think it was comparable to getting Swiffers and you can wash this and reuse it a bunch of times. So this would probably be a winner in that regard. And now if you're the type of person that really gets a thrill out of cleaning like under your appliances, she did say that something like this is good. I'll link to a better one, this one, the one. Um, but she did say something like this is good for cleaning under appliances. That's not generally my jam, but it is kind of nice how this just telescopes. Um, so should, I don't know, just for funsies, should we see what's under the, what's under our fridge? Oh, I can hear toys. Oh, did I push them? Oh, gross. Can you see that? I hope you can't see that. <laughs> There's a board here to like level the fridge, so it's not letting me get under it as well as I wanted to. There we go. <laughs> cleaning checklist I made a while ago. Yeah, oh, no, that's homeschool or homework. Oh, wow. Okay, you know, this is a little bit satisfying. I will, I will give you that. Oh, seriously, that's, it. I mean, in a really gross way. Ugh. All right, I'm gonna try and go from the other side to see if I can get a better angle. I would love to know if you're the type of person that regularly cleans underneath your fridge. I never have been in the past, but I think I could start to become that person just because now our house is so much easier to maintain. That does feel kind of good. All right, I'm gonna go grab our silicone broom and we'll sweep this up quick. Okay, I am maybe seeing another benefit to the silicone broom here because this gross, dusty, hairy stuff if I would use my regular broom right now to sweep it up, it is going to stick to it, and then I have to use my hand to pull it off, right? But with the silicone broom, even though, again, I don't think this is the right dustpan for it, um, it's not gonna stick to the broom, which is fantastic. So, I don't know. It would take some getting used to, but maybe, maybe this isn't so bad. And now I have to decide, do I, do I keep the bolt that was under the fridge or just throw it away. And as long as we're talking about floors, uh, hands down favorite mop will not look for any others is the O Cedar mop. Uh, even when we have used this to clean up sheetrock dust, it works so well. And Linda, my wonderful cleaning lady, she uses the same one. Um, so when I saw that, I was like, okay, it must be a really good <laughs> mop. And I've heard from many of you too that you love this mop. It picks up everything on the floor really well. This comes off, you can throw it in the washing machine, you can get replacements for it. I just use water with a little bit of vinegar in it and it seems to work really well. So, and it's just not expensive. So I love the O Cedar mop. And then vacuum wise, we have the Dyson. This is a V, I don't know. Um, I'll link to it. You can often find them cheaper either at Walmart or directly from the Dyson site. They have really great warranties. Now, again, we don't have pets in the house and we don't actually have a ton of carpet. So is this the best vacuum ever? I have no idea. Could there be better out there? Maybe, but I'm not gonna try any. For what we use it for, it works awesome. It's portable. It has the different attachments and it doesn't take up very much space, easy to empty. So I really like it a lot. It works really well. There's a couple things for the laundry room. I wanna show you this guy and see, see if it's gonna work and do what I'm hoping it's gonna do. Okay, so I don't know if this is a common problem or not, but I've always noticed when we pull out our lint trap, oh, what's that? <laughs> when we pull out our lint trap, there is always lint that stays trapped down here so and there's always this like trailing stuff but i'm like how do we get it out of there so that's what this tool is for i have no idea if it's going to work well or not let me just clean this off <laughs> real quick and then we'll try this out okay so it comes in a two pack i have no idea why like why would you need two of these i don't know and it's kind of long here um i don't know okay Oh, I see why, because that actually goes down a lot further than I thought, okay. Uh, hmm. Interesting. There is not nearly as much coming up out of here as I thought there <laughs> would be. I always felt like there was so much more staying down in there. And it, this is so messy. <laughs> I hope I'm sparing everyone from buying this. What on earth? 
This is, I don't know, like am I doing it right? That was not very gratifying at all. Okay, I'm gonna grab the vacuum and vacuum this up and this, unfortunately, I don't even know what to do with this <laughs> now. <laughs> Okay, but let me share a couple actual laundry favorites with you. So we use the Molly's Suds laundry detergent. Um, again, it was just trying to go more chemical free. It works well. Uh, could there be better? Probably. I don't know. I know many of you have said you really like the earth sheets. I do think this comes out to be cheaper per load if I'm not mistaken, but I love those and I think those are a great option too. I mean, I say I love those. I, from what I've heard, I love them for you all. I haven't actually ever tried them. <laughs> again, I find something that works. I just stick with it. I have it set up on an auto fulfillment on Amazon and I don't even think about it. I have recently um, wanted to try this for uh, whites. So I don't love using bleach and I think I just always worry that I'm gonna like mess it up or something and I don't love the smell of it um, when we're running a load with it. So the Molly Suds also has an oxygen whitener, but even after I got it, I'm like, I probably could just got OxyClean. I actually really like OxyClean a lot and I don't think there's bad chemicals in it. I could be mistaken. I trust the Molly Suds brand, so I'm like, I'll just get it, but it's not cheap. So I don't know if this will, uh, if we'll keep using this or not. And then as far as stain treaters, I have tried lots of these, uh, all sold to me by influencers. So I'm sure you've seen this around. This works well. We just used it to get ink out of one of Maggie's t-shirts. She wrote on her hand and then fell asleep like with her hand against her shirt. So we sprayed this on and washed it. It took it out great but i actually prefer this piercy stain removal just because the spray pattern is bigger this has a really small spray pattern and you feel like you have to use a lot this is like much bigger and it works equally as well so this is the one we'll use these up but i like this one better and then if it's something greasy um for greasy things you need some kind of degreaser so we just use dawn dish soap um, these are more for like colored stains like berries or ink those kinds of things. I did learn that from Melissa from Clean My Space that you do have to make sure you have the right stain treater for the type of stain you have. Um, so if it is greasy, you need an actual degreaser, but these work well for all the other types of stains. Okay, well, I think that's everything in the laundry room. I really try to keep it simple in here. Let's head out. I'm actually excited to try out this hack for cleaning car mats and see if it works. So I don't know. Okay, I'm trying to find a place out of the wind, but I don't know if I am succeeding. Okay, car mats are notoriously hard to clean because everything sticks to them, right? So have you seen this hack? Uh, I've seen it quite a few different places now. You can get these like brushes inexpensively on Amazon now. Do not get them to clean your shower. I tried these a few videos ago. It, they suck, like they're not good for cleaning your shower, but supposedly they're good for cleaning floor mats. So I don't know, let's give it a try and see if it works. Oh my goodness, I seriously can't believe how well that works. In fact, the battery was going well uh, dead on Tom's drill. Otherwise it would have worked even better. It takes just a little bit to get the hang of it but it took everything off. It just like blew it off. And even if you have like pet hair or little strands of things that normally stick into it, I couldn't believe how it was just like whisking it off. It was a little dusty and messy, so I definitely do it outside, but it worked extremely well. And those attachments, it was like a, a four piece set. It was like $6 or less. And so it'd be a great Father's Day gift or just something to have in your arsenal for cleaning out your vehicles. That worked very well. All right, well, another product testing in the books. Overall, I hope I helped you find a few new products that might make your life easier or more enjoyable when it comes to cleaning. And I hope I helped you avoid some impulse buys that might not quite pay off. So uh, I would love to know, did I rule out or discount any of these products that you actually really love? Do you have some favorites that you would add to the list? Will you please leave that down below? I learned so much from you. And like I said, I have all of this information together in a printable too, if that's helpful for you. And we'll put links for everything in the description. I will link to my other product testing ones. If you wanna see that one with the, the stove debacle, oh man. <laughs> my stove will just stay dirty forever, it's fine. <laughs> we'll never do that again. All right, well, I love you. I hope you have a really good day and I'll see you again soon.